Dave here. How are you? Sorry, I was just uh, doing a quick post on Instagram. Hopefully it made it out there. Today is, today is the 16th of August, 2020. Man, oh man, just spring is just around the corner. We've got some flowers starting to come out on some of the fruit trees. It is very exciting for us. I saw John Paris said uh, it's 109 degrees over there in the States today. That's hot. I, uh, I feel sorry for you, buddy, but not too long in the future, it'll be starting to cool off and we'll be getting hotter, which is fantastic. I, uh, I love spring and autumn. I'm not a fan of summer and winter, uh, but you know what I mean? It's what I haven't even said what I mean, have I? <laughs> it's, uh, I'm waffling. Let's get into it. Let's get into the show. Now today, today on the show, we're going to have a look at flush trim bits for routers. And also, I'm going to put an end panel on this unit here that I'm building. Uh, it looks kind of crappy. It's got a big hole in it down here. This is melamine. I'm going to use a special glue to do this with. Um, I'm going to show you a quick way of clamping it from the outside rather than having clamps all the way through the center because it's a wide panel. I can't clamp all the way in. I'm going to avoid using screws from the inside because this panel is only a quarter inch thick on the outside. I could use tiny little pinless uh, brads to hold it while it goes off. But, you know, there's some little interesting things. Um, Matt, how are you? Cole, morning, lovely day there in Coffs. Just beautiful crystal clear skies here, Tippo. Uh, Ellie, everyone from Sharon, uh, Shannon, Quebec in Canada. G'day. Are we live? We are indeed, Joe. We are live. Everything is coming through well. I'm starting to panic because YouTube are getting rid of the classic version of creating these live streams and they're forcing everyone over to this new studio version. And I'm a little bit old and I forget things as you saw last week. And uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with things that I'm comfortable with. I don't really like new things. That's why I got the CNC is because it's making this work, which is good. Yeah, there you go, Joe. Uh, greetings from Somerville. Good morning, Stephen. Paul Angus, good morning. Damien, morning from very wet Perth. All right, so these end panels, I'm going to cut them first and glue them on because I want to use my trimmer to trim the edges right at the end of the show. I've got to leave the glue on for 30 minutes. Um, there we go. I think that's about it. Well, the other thing I'm going to do is I've you know, the other day I created those kind of cutouts in the top of the drawers, the drawer fronts for the lathe cart, so I didn't catch my fingers. Good morning, Brian and Dave. Um, I'm going to create this cutout using a flush cut router cutter on the router table, uh, using, as I say, that cutter, and I'm going to be starting off with this blank. So that's the blank, and I'm going to create this. And it's a tricky little thing, but it's easy enough to do with a router. And I know there's a lot of people out there say, Dave, we haven't got the fancy tools. We've just got the basics. Show us how to use those. Well, I'm going to. There you go. All right, John, let's get a lot of thumbs up. <laughs> OK. All right. I was going to talk about putting this panel on. I'm going to use this stuff. I'm not sponsored by them, but I have put a link in the description box down below if you're in Australia, to get this stuff. If you're interested, this is for gluing melamine because it doesn't like being glued with anything much at all other than that. Uh, did my thumbs up an hour ago. Bob, good morning, Dave. Very wet and cold. Gippsland. All right, I'm going to switch the cameras. I'm going to be using the TSO gear. And we'll switch this one. So I'm going to be, you can see me here. All right, I'm going to be using the parallel guides which are selling out all the time. Again, links in the description, affiliation, I'm full declaration. Uh, I'm, I was going to try and find a piece of quarter inch ply. I thought I had one, but it was a 15 mil panel and I'm not putting that on the end, it's a waste of ply. So I'm gonna rip this down to half the width of the panel and then I'm gonna dock it to the right lengths and we're gonna put it on the end. And hopefully you'll be able to see how clean this cuts just using the, the track saw to do it all. First of all, I'm going to activate the Bluetooth on the dust extractor. So that's spinning. Once I've got the spinning light down there, I push this button on the battery here until it goes blue. There it goes, turn this on. He jumps in and says, all right, I can see you. 
ready to go. I do have the splinter guard down on the outside. And I've already set the, the parallel guides up to the right width. So here we go. You might want to turn your sound down a little bit. That's good. Excellent. That's all done. See, these things have got little bumpers on them. You just set it up to the right width, both ends, and then out of the way. Move this out of the way. The easy way. Done. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to dock the ends. I want them to be nice and square. So I'll use this one. And it all works with 6mm, which is great. It's such an easy system. I've got the saw set to 10 millimeters below the track. So, which is, the track has got thickness of five millimeters. There's two gauges here, <coughs> pardon me, that we're working with. One has got FS, which stands for Vorenschiene, which is guide rail in German. Close enough, my accent, German accent is probably rubbish. Uh, and then it shows 14 millimeters if it was just working off the sole of the saw. So I've got it set there. And I'm going to cut that end off. Uh, I'm not going to do a reverse cut, but we'll see how it goes. If it looks rubbish, I'll do a reverse cut on the next one. <laughs> you tell me what you think. They look pretty good both sides. You know, I love it. Now I'm going to spin it around because I know I have both these edges are parallel to each other. That is square off there. So if I come along this way, it will be, that will be a totally square section or rectangular. Now I've got the 30 inch guide on and I've set that to the length that I'm after, which is 700 and 10 millimeters because that's the depth of the unit that I'm working on. So I'll just push that stop down, slide it down to where it's got to go. That's all there. It's so easy. Do my cut. One. That's one piece. I'm doing two of them, remember, because I didn't have the width. I'm going to butt them up to each other on the panel, on the, on the end panel there. <coughs> Pardon me. And another cut. Yeah, very embarrassing. I was, I was all set. Put that on the floor. I was all set to... Um, just grab a sheet of quarter inch ply out of the rack, but I didn't have any. And I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? So there's my two pieces. And let's see how they look. That doesn't look too bad, does it? I reckon that'll be nice. It's following all the same kind of grain. Lovely. Next thing to do is to glue them on. So I shall move this. I'll go back here first to do this. <coughs> you guys are all reading. Uh, morning, Dave. Uh, sorry, not sorry. I'm late for cooking my late fresh laid egg. Brecky, good on you. Hey, Alan, how are you? I'm going to drop this down a little bit. Because I want to show you what's going to be happening down at the end here. Let me see how that looks on the other camera. Yeah, not bad. Tip it down just a touch. That'll do me. Good. All right. 
Beautiful day in Caloundra, Queensland, but sounds like a weather report. It, <laughs> it does. Oh, dear. All right, let's go to this camera. There we go. Now, before, before I can put any of this glue on, what I've got to do is sand that panel with 120 grit paper just to etch it. So I'm going to, so I want to cover all the, want to get rid of that hole from the outside. I'm not going to glue this area here because this is part of the torsion box that's holding the top up. It's keeping it flat. And if ever I want to take that box off, I, d I don't <laughs> want to make a headache for myself. I'm going to glue to this section here and cover this down here. So all of these screws, this is the old way that I, I did it before I started using pocket holes. Just screw straight through the cabinet. And ordinarily that works great. But and the, there used to be a, a dust port here, a four inch dust port, that I had some fancy mechanism in here to collect sawdust from underneath. It was a bit of a flop, so we won't talk about that. All right, I'm going to quickly sand this. That's all I need to do. I don't need to do any more than that. We're creating just an etching on the surface for the glue to get that final bite in there. What I will do is get a wet rag or a damp rag and just rub it over the surface. Otherwise, we'll have a lot of, otherwise, otherwise, we'll have a lot of uh, dust that's going to be in the way and holding it up. That'll dry off pretty quickly. Can you see it? I don't know if you can. See just there, that's all that melamine that's sitting on the rag. It would have been a headache. We'll give it a second to dry. I'll have a quick look over here. Uh, Art Wheeler, good morning, good morning. Mike Doom, never a flop Dave, just a feature with less desirable outcomes. Uh, Stephen, you're in Mafra. But before we locked down, my wife and I were camping at Perry Bridge. Anyone following my daughter around Australia at the moment? She's having a fantastic time. It's called On the Warpath. W-A-U-G-H Path. That's her surname. All right. Let me have a look. I think... Yep, that's dry enough. How cool is this? Are you enjoying what I'm doing? Like, you guys have got to tell me if you like what I'm doing on these kind of shows. Sometimes I go high tech, sometimes I just this kind of stuff, but it's all got to be done. It's all part of woodworking. Um, and every now and then I will forget where the hell I am or what I'm doing, like I did last week on the show with the path guide system. And you would be amazed at how many people have sent me emails and messages uh, of support and more, almost condolences. But they're saying, Dave, uh, you know, it's happened to me so many times as well. So don't stress. Well, I do, but anyway. It's funny, I put on subscribers after that show. Normally on a live show, it just kind of stays normal. But uh, I put on a few extra subscribers. All right, as I said, I think that's dry. Saw the wars at a great swimming hole. Yeah, wasn't that fantastic? You're enjoying it, Russ. Beautiful. Uh, have you ever owned a joint of thickness combo? I have never owned one. I've considered getting one. Let me get this glue on. Uh, thanks, Joe. Ebony is putting up some great tricks. Just, <laughs> that's why you like it. All right, I'll, maybe I'll throw in some more bloopers on purpose or not panic about it so much what I'm doing. Look, let's get this put on. Go down to the other camera. There we go. Now, one of the things I need to do is to clamp it in position. Now I'm going to put a couple of spring clamps on to start. What have we got? Uh, a few of these. 
All right, we're just going to use some spring clamps and I'm going to put the glue on. Now, rather than use a glue brush over this, I'm going to put a fair bit of glue on and I'm going to rub it over with a rag to try and get it everywhere. So I may even just put a truckload on the rag and be done with it. Here we go. What's happening there is I'm getting a little bit of uh, stick. The um, oops, on the floor, but it's all right. That'll clean off. Getting a bit of the um, paper from the paper towel was starting to be a problem there. So I'm going to disperse it as much as I can on the job. It does stick pretty well. This is the important part, right up the edge. And also in the center. Done. Right. Slowly going to spread that out. That's coming up all right. I don't want too many bumps to hold it up. I guess I should have also put gloves on, but I'm in a bit of a rush and that was probably my seniors moment for the moment today. I trust everyone's having a good time and um, staying safe, even though the world is going through something that's unprecedented, really, in this time, and we're getting there. Now, this goes off pretty quickly. I'm going to wash my hands. And dry them. Here are my two panels. going to go up there like that. That one, I'll take this off now and then I'm going to pinch clamp this. Yes. And on the other side, the same thing. Moving it up a little bit. Oh, it does slide. Look at that. That's why these little clamps are a great idea. Release these two again. Push it up. Actually, Ebony might be on the show watching today. She, she said she'd try. Right, that's going to look a whole lot better than what I've got there at the moment. Than that than what I had, I should say. I need to take this drawer out on this side. The reason being I want to put a clamp across the top. I could have, if I wanted to, just thrown up. Hey, Ebony, how are you? I said she might come on. All right. I'm sighting down these to try and find the curve. There we go. That's a curve there. See how it's rocking? So now I'm going to put clamps on the end, both sides, both ends, I should say. What have we got? I need something that's going to be strong to pull it up. I'll use a couple of these guys. Drop this down a touch. So it's a there. I've got overhang. It's important that I have an overhang because this is where we're going to run the trim cutter up. I won't be able to get up to the top here, but that's okay. I'm going to do other things up in the top corner here. Now, here's another little thing. If I bring that up to there, it can act as a support.
for the other clamp before I get there. Um, don't stuff myself up here. Got it. And on the other side. Beautiful. Now that's, that's giving me even pressure right across. That's pulling the center in because it's got that slight bow in it. It's very hard to find a straight piece of wood. And when you do find a straight piece of wood, in this situation, it's going to be a problem because it's not going to put that pressure into the middle of the board. Now see how it's wobbling around down there? I need to sort that out. Drop that down to there. And this one is already down there. Couple more clamps. And so we should be able to take these clamps off before the end of the show and run the trim cutter up the outside. Check for straight. Which way, which way? It's got a slight bow. What about this one? That's got a much better bow. Well, we'll use that one. See that? I do these things and I'm sure a lot of people say, oh yeah, of course, of course. Well, everyone would know that. But sometimes not everyone does. Yeah, see, it's out at this end and it's going to pull that in when I pull that clamp up. Just a matter of finding a bit of wood that's got a bit of a bow in it. Oop, that's on the track. I can't do that. On the runner, I should say. Draw slide, whatever. That's looking pretty nice. Pretty nice. Let's go for one in the center as well. Um, what have we got? A couple of click clamps. And we can move that now down to there. And that one. <laughs> These things are so handy. You know, there's all sorts of companies so Spring clamps. Now, where was I with this one? It hasn't got much of a bow, but we'll go with that. Drop this down a little. And that one. And you know what? Could I do that for the moment? That might be enough, you know. We'll throw this on anyway. Yep, a little bit of extra bite. So I'm going to put a couple more spring clamps here, here, and here. I got a few more over here, I think. You know, they can be these, they can be Irwin's, they can be whoever you want. Just as long as they're a clamp. I'm doing it right on the edge with these things to just to make, maintain that pressure right on the end. That's, that's pretty nice. I like it. I like it. Come back to the other camera. There we go. Done. It wasn't too hard. And people say Bunnings timber is useless. Glad. <laughs> yep. You can never have too many clamps. Of course not. Um, don't leave it too late. The videos are great. Ebony, keep them coming. Excellent. Um, sorry. What is F I F O? I I don't know. Clean that glue up on the floor. Don't forget Wolfcraft clamps. They're your favourite. Well, there you go. Like. There's so many people. Do you want me to get that? I'll tuck down here and grab it. It's paradise here in the mountains, Ebony. What are you talking about? She can't wait to get back. <laughs> I'll give this a rinse out. There we go. I've got a nice clean floor again. That's going to make you a happy way. All right. 
So there we go. That hopefully, doesn't that look better? Um, fly in, fly out. All right, okay, got it. Thank you. Now, I'm going to move that camera down the other end. Nearly half past. This is going great. We can take that off at around 10 minutes too. They say 30 minutes in the clamp. Uh, beautiful but cold. <sighs> We're closer to the sun here, Ebony. I keep on telling you. You know, we've got that elevation of 675 metres. I don't know. Nice. Um, summer gets very hot. I think that's going to look great, great. Actually, looking at that, these rails are also starting to give me ideas. I may do things across the end and screw them on like little clamp holders. That could be cool. Ah, stop, stop. It. <laughs> um, I'm going to move this camera. Give me a second. And around about there, I think. I'll have a look through the through this one. Oh, Mark, thank you very much for that. Feel free if you want to do that kind of stuff, or if you want to become a patron. It uh, it really does help keep me inspired. Thank you, thank you so much for that. Um, camera three is looking all right, but I need to just adjust it a touch, which I can from here, and see what's happening at the same time. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Lovely. All right. French cheers on the ends. Uh, French cleats, did you mean, or French cheers? Um, not sure. Not sure. But there's things that French cleats might be an idea as well. You know, I love getting the input. And also, please send in your images of projects you're doing at the moment. Um, BG Thompson, please send some stuff in that you're doing. I know you and your wife do stuff in the, in the shed with the lathe and that. So send in some pictures of the projects you're up to and uh, on my email in the description box at the bottom and uh, we'll throw them up on the show. It's a community thing. All right, camera three. And I'll slide around. I'll tip it up ever so slightly just to make sure you can see me. Just check that that's right as well. It should be okay. Uh, top of the timber rack, that, that there. Yeah, you should be able to see me. All right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a jigsaw and a flush cut saw, basic, well, a Jap Japanese saw. These are a pull saw. This one also has a very, very fine set, which means I can use it as a flush cut on reasonably hard surfaces. I'm going to do a couple of cuts. I'm going to do a cut there, a cut there, and a cut along here in line with the rebate that I've got on the back here. See, this is a rebate. This was a kind of a handle thing. It didn't kind of go how I planned, but I've got another idea for it that's going to be even better. You know, our mistakes always end up, or sometimes our mistakes end up, a better place than we were going to be. Um, because when I'm opening, this is a drawer for a sustainer, a sys one, and when I, I turn the handle on it, I found my, the handle was jamming my finger between the top here and there. So I needed to drop it, this part down to that height. It'll make sense. So to do that, I'm going to start off by using the jigsaw, cutting down and along. The only blade that I've got in the saw is a monster. I wouldn't ordinarily use that, but I haven't got any shorter blades. I need to buy some. Um, give me a second. I'm going to throw my earmuffs and eyes on with the jigsaw. It's one of those things that you know, I never used to do when I was younger. I wish I had, then I'd have better hearing. You know, what do they say? You can't put an old head on young shoulders. I was the worst offender. All right. I don't have dust extraction hooked up to this at the moment, but we'll be okay.
but it is a bit noisy. Just turning out of the corner there. I'll come from the other end. And turn it. Now the flush cut saw, there's my mark. I want to stay as close to that mark as possible, but not on it. I need to leave a little bit of waste to, for, the, for the router to cut off for me. That'll do me, and I'll come in sideways. Doesn't, this is a uh, cross cut, it's not a rip, that's why it was struggling a little bit there. I'll do it on this end as well. Now you may see people on YouTube use these flush trim, flush trim cutters and I saw someone use it yesterday and I thought you're leaving way too much material on it. If, the, if your router is screaming while you're doing this, You've left way too much material on there. You notice the other week when Cole was down here with his gift can jig stuff, um, he did some little clearance passes right at the end. Also, what's going to happen is I will follow this in. I'll track along and then I'll get near the end. And then what I'm going to do is I'll bring it out and I'm going to bring it in from the other end a little bit and just work that corner because it's going to want to try and tear this out. Don't want that to happen. Now, what am I going to rely on to do all this? Well going to throw this on. I'm just going to check that it's actually running. <laughs> I've done this before. I've done this where I think I've switched the cameras over and I'm waffling. Up. <laughs> Everyone's shouting at me in the side column, Dave, switch the camera. But if I'm not there, I'm not there. Now, what I need to do is I'm going to use these little blocks as guides for the bearing. So I'm going to have the bottom of this rebate is going to be the guide for the bearing and also this block. So it'll come along, it'll hit there, give me a little bit of a round because it's a half inch diameter cutter. So it'll be a quarter inch radius and then up it'll come up the side. Now I have to make sure that I'm inside the cuts and I think everything's looking pretty good there. And I also need to make sure that I don't have the clamps underneath because it's going to foul things up on me. So I'm going to clamp it from the back here. I'm going to use these little guys here because they work well. Checking that I'm in the right spot. I think I am. See that's got that. It's not going to go anywhere. And I'm going to do the same at the other end. I'll spin it around so you can see it happening. into position and I can see I'm on that mark there. Ah, idiot. <laughs> it's one of those things when you're trying to show people how to do something, you get yourself out of the way of things a little bit where it would have been easier. That's got him. Okay, so there's my two stops. Stop there and a stop there. And this bottom of the rebate is going to be the guide for the bearing as well. Now I need to bring the router up to the right height, make sure it's unlocked. Drop that in there. This is a spiral up cut. Now, for people that haven't watched the show before or are new to woodworking, a spiral up cut means that the cut is going to direct, it's, it's the cutters are rotating, or this is a solid carbide cutter, it's rotating all the way back towards the machine, back towards the router. So if I had the router in my hand and was doing stuff, it would be cutting whichever direction it's going, but the fluting would be forcing all of the dust back up towards the router, which is where the dust collection is. The other one is a spiral down and there's also a compression cutter, which the bottom section, maybe bottom five millimeters of the cutter, is a spiral up and the rest of it is a spiral down. And that's for doing edges, doing edges along the edge here. Uh, it will make sure that we're not getting any tear out on the top or at the bottom. 
because the cutter will be pulling material down and pulling material up on the edges. I use a compression cutter now and then on the CNC and it works very, very well. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to raise this up until that double bearing. Now this bearing has got a nylock nut on the top to hold the bearing in position. That's not going to come off. And if you're concerned about me touching the cutter, this is the little safety button that I've got to put in a switch. So the router can't turn on. This is a mechanical stop, not just an electric stop. It's a mechanical stop. The switch won't activate without that in it. Now I'm going to check the height. I need to have those bearings up above where I'm going to be cutting. And I reckon that's pretty good there. I love this. Lock it. There we go. Can't raise up and down. If there's any, any vibration there, it's not going to go up or down. Now, dust extraction. I'm going to turn the main dust extractor on. It's going to pull down there. Ordinarily, I'd have the fence here, which has got a dust port in it. I haven't got the fence on, of course. I thought you might want to see what's happening. So I'm going to use the TSO table saw stock guide jig that I made. That's probably something they've never thought <laughs> it would be used for. Um, I'm going to use it to hold that hose. I'm going to lock that magnet there so it can't go anywhere. Undo this one. Slide that through. Of course that's going to happen. <laughs> oh dear. I'll plug this in. Up the top here. Rotate it over there a little bit. It's my overhead dust collection for the table saw when I'm using it. There you go, make, make do, what do you reckon? Hopefully it's going to work. And the eye mask, make sure everything's out of the way. How are we doing for time? Plenty of time, we're killing it. All right. Now this part, I've sound insulated my box underneath the router table here. So this is an extremely quiet router. Uh, you may want to turn it down. I don't think you really need to. It really is so quiet. We'll turn the dusty on. So there's a draft there and a draft going down. We'll see if it works. A quick check that I've got everything in position. Routers are extremely dangerous if you don't have your wits about you. Just check that everything's going to run all right. Along. Yeah. If I hadn't cut that area out prior, I'm asking for so much trouble. You're going to put so much extra strain on that cutter and on the machine. And also you're going to get massive breakout all over the place. And it's going to be noisy as all get up. So it's so important to clear the stuff first. All right, here we go. And in slowly. Come in from the other side very slowly and just nibble away very slowly at that corner. Now I can come in. And off. Done. So what do you think? I'm going to run it over that trimmer as well. I'll spin it around. Take the clamps off. Spin the camera around. Down here. Now I'm not seeing anything that's happening on the reading section. So I'll do that now. I'll have a quick look. <sighs> Back here again. Uh, 
I feel the same way about Count Morning, Dan. How are you, Matthew? Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so it looks like it's the Ebony War Show here, looking up the, <laughs> the side of the chat. Um, not to worry, not to worry. I'm happy to support my children. <laughs> All right, do those Bessie quick cramps work with the guide rail? Uh, yes, they do. And where do you get them from? Can't find any in Australia. You can get them overseas. You can get them, uh, just order them if you want to. Carry on, Dave, talking amongst ourselves. The other thing is I, th I have links. Um, Amazon sell them. There are, there are some Amazon sites that will send them to Australia. So, you know, the, th the, th the reason it's hard to get them is because Bessie make the, that clamp for Festool, and it's a green one. And I just like to have, I've got both. <laughs> I'm a bit of a tragic, I, I like both of them. Um, and so because the Festool ones are in Australia as well, or in the States, or wherever, sometimes it's hard to get a hold of the Bessie equivalent because there might be an arrangement between the two different companies that are selling them. That's all there is. Um, let me see, carry on. Okay, I will, thank you. Um, Mark Palmer, morning, Dave just joined. Well, thank you. I'm going to have a look at the other camera and see if we're right for the roundover. Should be okay. I'll go down there now. We'll just run a quick roundover on it. Tip it up a little. Good. I had someone ask me to make a, um, a block for their K5 for them to work with my bench, which I did. Posted it off to Melbourne and um, I'm happy to do that. If you want one, give me a shout. In Australia, I can make you one exactly the same as I did on the show. All right, <clears throat> down to here, move that up there. I'm gonna put a round over on here. Now, when you're approaching a router uh, like this, Sometimes it'll flick around the back and drag your fingers in there as well. So you just have to be so careful. On the big router, I've got a guide. It's a pin that I can push. Say there's a pin here. I can push the job up to it and then advance it towards the cutter. And it's safer because you've got all this leverage. There's your pivot. There's your, this is your fulcrum back here. And the action is happening back there. That's where the, um, that's where all the, the intensity of your weak arm here becomes Superman back here. So I'm just going to go very carefully. I'm going to keep my fingers up out of the way as I approach it. Then I'll drop down to do the cut. Going around a corner or end grain, don't go too slow. I will do this and this first so that as the router comes up through here, there's less chance for chip out. Remember the other week when I was using my little block plane, I said do along the grain first, if you're doing an arras or a chamfer, and then do the end grain because all the fibers have already been cut away. There's no chance of catching them. Little tips, turn this on. Okay, up top, very slowly. And this end. Now we're going to do the round. See, even though I move quickly, we still got that little bit of burn there. Not to worry. Down the other end. And the other camera. Cool. <sighs> Reading. Uh, yeah, 186. Good to see. Yeah, brilliant. I uh, need to catch up. Love the convenience of everything here in Vic, but miss the six hour trip for the pub. Uh, 185. It is what it is, you know. If, if you want to if you want to do a thumbs up do a thumbs up if you don't you don't it's your call your call all right i'm going to grab that other camera and sit it right here because you might be interested to see how i do this bit 
Ah, the um, I was going to say the other camera I've got mounted. I've got one more camera. It's mounted over the CNC at the moment. I don't really want to take it down. Uh, just there might be best. About there. Let's have a look. A dislike, eh? Well, you get that. All right. This should work okay. I'm going to switch over to this side. It's a little darker, but that's the way it goes. Uh, yes, people that do the thumbs down, they don't realize that it adds to the metrics. All right, Stanton Bench is coming to the center of attraction at the moment. Attention, I should say. Pop those in down there. And the one that we just did, we're going to sand those little bits. Drop that there. And these guys, again, there's links in the description if you want one. If you're in Australia, like so. Makes it easy, doesn't it? I love this bench. There's a few went out this week. So if you want one in Australia, give me a shout. I'm going to sand that. And where's my sandpaper? That's probably the only thing that I didn't, didn't get ready. Here it is. Found it. I'm going to use 120 grit paper. And remember, I... I can drag it backwards and forwards. This, this is a cloth back paper that's color coded. And if you stick your finger in the center of it while you're dragging it over, it will take those off pretty quickly. See? Works great. And a little bit of a rub along there, like so. I'll do the other end. That's looking pretty good. At the moment, I'm just saying there was a tiny, tiny line there from when I, the cutter was running along beside the, that spot. Now, a block. Again, 120 paper. It's just a block of wood. A cork block is best because it'll follow the contours. Like if, if there's a little bit of undulation, a cork block will, will do it. A solid block of wood won't. Right. That's ready for oiling. How good is that? Okay, let me have a quick look. Um, is that a Black & Decker workbench? No. This is a Stanton bench. It's got its name written on the front. Can you see it there? I'll flick up to the top camera and you can see. Up to Carl Camp. There you go. That's what it is. This is fantastic. It's my invention. It's based on a couple of other ideas that I've amalgamated into this design. And this design can be used anywhere in a house. You can throw it up on top of a kitchen bench. Um, on laminate surfaces, it's got this cushion strip is everywhere. It protects the surface that it's standing on. The legs are 3D printed for me um, by John at Yellow Box Shed. Uh, the behind here is also got more grip tape that pushes against the edge. I could set this up on an antique table and it'd be fine. Um, okay, so what do we got happening here? Medical stuff here in Sydney near Newman. Sign me out of trucking. Um, Stephen, make everything look like it's in your f All right, tell me you're the Boris. Tell them Boris sent you. Uh, where are the links? In the description box, Matthew. Now, I don't know what kind of computer you're watching this on. Can you tell me if you're watching <coughs> on a phone, computer, or a tablet? Or, you know, let me know. And we will try to um, try and help you out. The, the guys on the side here can help you out as well. <coughs> 10-2.
turn to, which means I can take the clamps off down the back here. And let's see if it doesn't fall off. <laughs> oh dear. Camera three. That's not looking too bad. There we go. All right. Hopefully it's set. Now, the other thing about this stuff, it dries clearer than any other glue I've seen. It is the clearest, clearest glue. Just amazing. I'm going to leave these little clamps on for the moment. I don't know why. It just sounded like a nice thing to say. That's going to drop. There we go. Bit of bendy wood. Uh, that one off. That one off. This one off. This one off. Off, off. Oh, you can never have too many clamps. That, my friends, is looking very, very nice. Now we're going to use the flush trim bit, and that's feeling good too. That's so nice. It's going to need just the tiniest, tiniest rub with a little bit of light paper. And this stuff isn't very expensive ply, so. This is wafer thin. I gotta be so careful when I do that. That's pretty good. The other option I've got is I could put the tiniest, tiniest little fly mold over the top of that. Now fly mold is basically an inch wide by maybe three sixteenths or quarter inch thick, rounded on either side, and it dresses up joints. They used to use it all the time for joining fibro and stuff on houses on the inside and also for eave suffixes around as well for the joins before they came out with the plastic H connectors so like that the sheet would slide into either seat so that's one side of the H connector it would slide in there and the same on the other side and that's that's what I've got around the walls here that's nice I like that okay I'm going to get the uh, other camera happening and grab the other machine from down the back here, the little trim router, and I'll go through some other styles of flush cutter or pattern following bits. You might be interested, they, they are different, basically it lines up to, or it comes down to where they keep, I'll grab them all, where the bearing is in relation to the cutter, in relation to the end of it. All right. Bring this up here. I'll release this. Take this off. Unplugged. Oh, it's unplug it. Take that one out and put this one in. <laughs> when you're changing a router cutter, make sure that the little slots in the collet or the chuck, whatever you want to call it, are clean. Because if you've got dust build up in there, they can't clamp shut around this. And also, here's another little thing. Were you aware there is a line on the shank of most router cutters as to where they should be pushed into the machine up until, and that's where the end of the chuck or the collet locks onto it. Did you know that? So it's right there. I'm working on their recommendation rather than saying, ah, oh, that's far enough in. <laughs> okay, that's locked. Now this is a flush cut bit. Now I say that because the bearing is on the outside. Bits that have got the bearing on the closer side to the router are called a pattern following bit. And that's one right there. See that? So if that was in there, could not that it could fit in there. Let's see if I've got a smaller one. This one. This is my little one for box joints. So it goes in and see the bearing is on the low side, closer to the machine. The cutter is exposed. These are dangerous if you have them in a router table um, and you're doing freestyle following a pattern because the, the nasty sharp part is sticking up 
Now, if your pattern is like, let's say, Cole's Gifkin's jig, you need to have them like this style because they follow the, the pattern that is the base of his jig as you move it around. I'm sure Cole will be able to explain a little bit more. You can't use this style in the Gifkin's jig because the pattern's not on top of the area. It's, so if you go into a store and you say you want a pattern following bit or a flush trim bit, this will be your, your, this will be your flush trim style or the one that I've got in here. See, it's the same, bearing away. And the part that's got the exposed part is what I call a pattern following bit. All right. Now I've got that in the machine. This is going to follow along on the, the back of the cabinet here. And I'll zoom you in closer to see all that when I do it. We're nearly time. I'll tell you what, we've done well for time today. Hasn't been too much chat. Now I'm going to wind this so there's not a whole lot of exposed. Now the timber is um, quarter inch thick, the plywood. So I need to have at least 6.35 millimeters of the cutter exposed. I want to get a little bit more. The melamine is 16 millimeters, which is going to be my pattern or my guide that I'm going to use this flush trim cutter on. So I'm going to come out just a little bit past, maybe eight millimeters of the blade exposed and then the bearing above that. All right. Plug it in over here, making sure that it's turned off. Mm, in there. We'll test that it works. Good. Uh, I won't be using the dust collection on it. I will throw my mask on. These things, use it. Hello, Frankie's CNC and Woodworking channel. Good spot to go if you want to find out and chat with like-minded people. Mel, what is the thickness of your ply? It's 6.35 mil. It's just the cheap stuff. I get it from Trademaster near um, Clyde or Granville. Uh, it's, it's, I like it, but be aware, that front veneer is extremely thin. We'll switch over to the other camera. No. The bearing won't melt the melamine because it's not spinning. The bearing down over here, the bearing is going to sit still. Not a problem. Okay, now I need to work from the bottom up. I'll stop here because the plate is going to stop me there. I'll finish the rest off. See, this was an afterthought. Here we go. Turn it off. I need to move this caster around a little bit. There, that's not going to be in my way now. I'll lock it too so it doesn't go sliding. Another quick pass. How's that look? That's pretty good. And I'll just hit that with a chamfer plane down the edge. I'll do the other side while I'm here. Not too bad. Shopping in Victoria. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I feel sorry for you guys. I'm seriously considering starting to wear masks up here in, in the mountains as well. It could, uh, could be the smart thing to do. We'll see. They haven't told us to do it yet, but 
uh, how nice does that look? I'm very happy with that. All right. Um, looks more like border police. <laughs> okay, well, that is 12 o'clock right on the knocker. Dad, Ace just said, Mum, Granddad does a lot of working. Oh, good on you, Ace. It's uh, one of my grandsons. Uh, excellent. All right, let me have a look here. Thank you again to all of my patrons, and I will read their names out. Thank you very much. These are the people that have come in at a certain level. Johannes Moa, John Parra, Vincent Yang, John Lafferty, Peter Woolworth, uh, Brian Delvecchio, Justin Bailey, Brett Guthrie, Hilton Bond, Mike Diem, Wayne Cargill, Matthew Raphael, uh, John Lynch, and Peter Partridge. Thank you so much to all of you guys and to all the patrons that uh, support me financially. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, I can't walk into the store, say someone gives me a chisel. They say, Dave, use this chisel on your show. You know, we'd love to do that. Well, I can't walk into Woolworths with a chisel and buy a bottle of coffee. That just <laughs> doesn't happen. So money makes the world go round. And thank you so much to everyone that's doing the uh, super chats, all that kind of stuff, and supporting me on Patreon because that's keeping me going. Now, after the show, talking about my patrons, if you're one of my patrons, we have a Zoom meeting which runs for about half an hour. I'm going to start that off in around five minutes time and we just have a little chat backstage and uh, we discuss what's happened on the show and what's happening in, in the, my patrons lives as well. It's just one of those little things that's a little society and uh, if you're a member, jump in and uh, become a patron. And you, we'll have the link in Patreon ready for you to use. All right, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I think that's everything that I've got here. Oh, one thing before I go, remember James from Fix It Fingers? Go and have a look at his channel. He's got some nice stuff. He's you know, starting it off and he's just got over a thousand subscribers. And uh, I'd, it'd be fantastic for him to be able to build that because he's passionate. He's, he's, got, he's got the bug big time in it and away he goes. Let me have a look down here. I think that's the lot. It is indeed. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you next week. Bye.